Yo, what is going on, guys? It is midnight, bringing you yet again another video on Fairy Tale. Uh, now, in today's video, we're going to kind of be talking about the characters that you can pick at the start of the game. So, your actual main character, and I'll kind of go through the different classes um, and just kind of give you a little bit of an in depth guide on what classes are good for, let's say, VIP players, and what classes you'll probably be better off if you're not planning on spending any money. Obviously, on this video you can pick any class you want it's entirely up to you you can also pick whatever character you want it really doesn't matter um, it's just sometimes you might find it's a lot easier depending on if you're VIP or not so let's get straight into it so I'll come here and select a class so these are the eight characters you have in game you have four dudes and four girls um, each of them will have different classes in their character model so picking any of the characters doesn't actually matter um, you do obviously have different classes per one however aesthetically there's no actual difference in skill or anything they just have different classes for example this chick the one that I picked can be uh, velocity and force whereas this one can be force and sound wave but obviously we'll get into all of that in a moment now when picking your character at the start of the game you will see like a few things down here like costumes these are just costumes that you get when you hit level 5 it does run out after a week or something like that so yeah I mean it's just you know you're not gonna spawn into the game like this it, after doing some missions you'll get some costumes but otherwise this is how they look um, in their original state so for the topic of this video we're kinda gonna go through the classes not really too much about the character cause that's just all preference pick whichever one you like the look of I guess um, and then you can have a look at the classes. If you're not happy with any of the classes, then pick someone else. So, for this first girl here, the one that I picked, her name is Sheila. Uh, she has Force and Velocity. Now, the first class is Force. Now, Force is a very strong um, physical single target DPS class. Um, in fact, if you're using this class, it is pretty much the strongest class for a single target in the game. Um, so it is very useful in later content when you have to focus on priority targets. Um, besides from that, pretty well balanced stats as you can see here, but very strong single target. So I can kind of show you some of the skills. So this is an AoE skill. It doesn't actually do that much damage, but it's just an AoE skill to have if you feel like you need to take out multiple characters. This skill here will make it so that you hit three times which is why the single target skill is so strong um, you do massive damage on three hits um, and it does require HP to be more than 10% so yeah that's one thing to take note another thing with this skill as well is once you use it you cannot attack the next turn so this skill is literally you make sure you use it um, and kind of think ahead of time because you cannot attack after this you can obviously use things like artifacts and potions and stuff but you just can't attack again after this the next skill here will be several attacks as you can see here um, does massive damage this is his ultimate skill or her ultimate skill sorry um, fury skills which I'll go in depth in another video um, they are quite difficult to get you do get them I think at level 55 um, and they do take a while to get in game but if you can get it, it does do massive damage as you can see here. So that's Force, a very strong single target physical damage dealing class. The next one is Velocity, which is class I picked. This class is another physical damage class. However, this one's very balanced. It's got good AoE, it's got good single target, and it is also quite a fast, rapid unit in as well. So just to kind of go through some of the skills here, so the first one is the AoE skill, which as you can see will deal damage to all the enemies on the enemy team um, as you level up the skill at least. So when you get to level 60, you'll be able to hit all six of the enemies. Um, level 40 you can only hit four, I think it is, and level 20 you can hit two, um, if I'm correct. Um, but as you can see, it's pretty much just an AoE attack. It's pretty good, um, not too much to do with the skill. The next skill is single target, where it will make the unit pretty much the fastest unit on the, on the, in the battle. Um, it basically raises the speed by 100% um, and it will single target attack. With this skill, if you land a critical hit, it will also stun the enemy as well. Um, so it's a pretty decent skill overall. With Velocity, I find that I'm using AoE attacks more often than not, but this skill is not bad at all. 
if you get the uh, obviously the stun. The next skill here is the ultimate skill and what this skill will do is it will increase your HP and MP by 100% for you and a teammate. You'll also have 20% um, increase to damage for you and your teammate for two rounds. The only downfall of this um, fury skill is that you cannot um, attack the next turn. Again, you can use potions and stuff, but you can't attack after this skill. You have to wait. So in reality, your teammate will have two rounds of 20% damage. You will only have one. So that's velocity, that's force for um, Sheila. The next class is this dude here. His name is Yui. Um, he has got force and sound wave. Let me restart, getting a connection problem. So he's got force and sound wave. Now force, as we've previously discussed, is single target um, damaging physical. Um, sound wave, uh, if I'm correct, is a magical class which will deal AOE damage, which we'll get into here. Hopefully it doesn't count me off again. So they've all got cool little animations as well when you click on them at first, which is pretty cool. So yeah, it's a very strong magical AOE damage dealing class. Also has very high magical defense, so very weak to physical damage, but very strong to physical uh, magic um, damage and also dealing magical damage. Also has pretty strong single target, but we're going to show you the skills here as well. So the first one is similar to the velocity, it will deal um, AOE damage to the whole enemy team. Um, obviously this increases with level. Um, so yeah, it's pretty good skill to have. And uh, it also reduces the number of targets increased by one at magic level 30, 50 and 70. So yeah, they're the uh, three level caps that you need to reach to get this uh, skill to have an increase um, on that. So this is a pretty good magic AOE skill considering it's one of the very few that we have in game. Um, pretty strong. The next skill here is a single target skill. It's quite a simple punch. Um, and all it does is just pretty strong single target damage. Not too much to it. Again, this is very similar to velocity class. It's just got um, no single target um, buff on it like the stun or anything. The rage skill here, as you can see, I don't actually know what this one does. Enter the mirror, mirror of reality for four rounds, reducing damage taken by 20%, applying sound wave to attackers when a take, uh, taking hit and restoring some HP at the end of each round. Shocking uh, wave cast while this is active, deals 30% more damage. Cool. This is not followed by a resting round, so that's good. It's not like velocity in terms of that you have a resting round. But overall, it makes this guy a bit more tankier because he will be able to take more damage and it will also heal um, as well. Now I don't actually know too much about the Fury skills because to be honest with you I've only seen like two in game because you never get them, like you very rarely get them but that's quite cool to know. So yeah, that's you. The next class here we've got Requip. Um, so if I show you Requip here, this is uh, the equivalent of Soundwave but for physical damage. Um, it is very heavy physical AoE. Um, pretty phys uh, good physical single target, other than that pretty well balanced stats as you can see here. Now in terms of skills, this is his AoE skill. It will deal physical damage to multiple enemies on the enemy team. And it just does huge damage, like absolutely huge damage. The only downfall of this is you do have a resting round after this, which is a bit of a shame. But obviously as the levels go up, you'll get an increase in the amount of people that you hit with it. But overall this skill does massive damage, like absolutely huge. Single target skill damage here, as you can see, it will hit twice. Um, it will do pretty decent damage. There is no um, uh, waiting time after this, so you can use it endlessly. Um, but yeah, it's pretty strong single target damage and skill. Um, just good to have, but overall you're really going to be using this first skill with him majority of the time because it is massive, like absolutely huge. The Rage will deliver multiple hits to all enemies, um, and that's about it. It's basically a very strong AoE damage and skill as you can see here, um, which is very good. However, you are having a resting round after this. Overall, um, Requip is actually a class I think I would have enjoyed using. Um, when I started the game, I just jumped straight into it and picked the character I liked the look of and just picked the class out of the two that I thought looked the best. 
Um, Elixir is your typical buffer, healing, basically your support. Um, has very strong healing, very tanky, and that's about it. In the class, you do have an AoE damaging skill. As you can see here, it just does damage AoE. Don't really want to be using this one too much because it doesn't do a lot of damage with this class. Um, you mainly want to be focusing on support, but you do have an AoE skill if you feel that you need to have it. Your next skill will heal three targets on your team. And as you level it up, it will also heal more people on your team. Obviously, if you increase your healing in game, you'll heal a lot more with this skill. Um, and obviously, as you reach the higher levels, you'll be able to heal more people on your team. So this skill is actually really good. Um, you find that you actually do need a healer in a lot of content in the game um, because the content gets very hard once you get like level 60 um, and onwards it starts getting quite difficult so if you're going to go for a healer this is not a bad class to go for. The rage skill here will grant 5 friendly targets with um, a shield of drought which absorbs a certain amount of damage for the target for 2 rounds, the ultimate is followed by a resting round um, so yeah obviously as you level this up you also get Oh uh, god, as you level up you'll be able to put a shield on more people on your team. Um, I feel like it's because I'm waiting on the character screen, it thinks I'm AFK. Uh, so I might have to keep coming back in and out, but we're almost done now anyway. So the Elixir class is actually very good, I think personally, like one of the best support classes. Um, I know there's not too many, but it's a very good support class um, to have. So I guess now we'll go on to the healer of sorts. Well, We've already spoke about requip. Now this is the cure class. This is your dedicated healer. It's pretty much like the elixir. Um, however, it's more dedicated towards healing rather than having buffs on your team. Um, so again, you have your typical AOE damage and skill. Nothing too special here. Um, it is literally just dealing damage to the enemy team. You don't really want to be using this. You are mainly a support when you're using this class. Your next one will heal. Excuse me, your next one will heal your team, uh, very similar to the previous one, however rather than healing your whole team, this one will heal more specific targets with a higher amount. Um, and it will also leave um, a healing effect on the character which will then heal per round. So you'll get an instant heal and then you'll get healed at the end of every round. So this is when it comes in, it's quite tactical with this healing skill, it's very good I think. Um, as I said, you do need healers in this game as well. Um, so if you are going to play the support role then this is also a good choice. The next one is the rage skill which as we can see here from the animation you'll put a shield around one of your uh, teammates. Um, this will render it invincible for two turns and restore 50% of the HP loss from taking damage. Um, so if anyone hits you in the shield you'll get 50% of that damage healed up to your team. So very good when you need to keep a key, uh, key target on your team alive. So overall, as you can see, the supports in this game are actually pretty strong. Now the next one is Guard, which we'll show here. So Guard is your typical tank. As you can see here, very high defense and reasonable uh, stats everywhere else, but mainly this guy uh, is gonna be your typical tank. He will take all your damage and put buffs on your team. Obviously you have um, your standard AoE skill. A lot of characters have this AoE skill. However, obviously because he's a guard unit, you don't really want to be using it because he is mainly to keep your team alive. Um, as you can see here, nothing too special, literally just AoE. The next skill is another kind of AoE attack. Um, you attack each target one time and go round four times. Um, so you'll just hit the enemy, that's about it, and it's basically an AoE single target attack rather than hitting them all at once. The next skill here, as we can see here, will remove all debuffs and controls on all your friendly targets and apply absolute guard which provides immunity to all control other than sleep when cast, boost the caster speed, this is followed by a resting round. So this is a good support skill, it will get rid of all debuffs that you have on your team which can come in clutch in like a last minute situation um, but for the most part um, you know you're only really going to be using this on one mode in particular, the, the, this rage skill. So overall if you're going to play tank then this guy is great to do because he is dedicated tank. Now there's only two more classes to go through which are Sleet and Alphabet. Now Sleet is your magical AoE damage dealer, very similar to the Soundwave, however this skill, um, well this class sorry is actually very good I, I would say um, as we're going to see here. 
So skill one is your AOE damaging skill, which have a 30% chance to gain Frigid when it learnt. Uh, the number of targets increased by one at magic 20, 40, 60, 80. So as you get to level 80, you can attack pretty much everyone on the enemy team. Um, it is a very good AOE damage and skill considering how much damage this guy does. Um, so yeah, overall, really good AOE skill. No um, cooldown time either. The next skill here is your single target skill. Uh, it is quite self-explanatory. It will literally just be a skill that will attack one target uh, and prevents them from resurrection. So if you feel like there's a person on an enemy team that has a re resurrection buff, you can use this skill to kill them and they will not be able to get back up. Now the rage skill here is the other one that I've seen. You will deal AOE damage to everyone on the enemy team and you'll also freeze one in particular target. A frozen target cannot move or attack until it is broken out of the frozen state. So this is quite game changing for big bosses. Um, the only thing is if you're playing with team that aren't coordinated and they accidentally hit the frozen target they will unfreeze and it will feel like a wasted ult, it will just feel like this AOE attack here. So overall this unit is very good, um, probably the best magic uh, attacker in the game I would say. I would say he's a little bit better than Soundwave but that's just my personal opinion because of his um, fury skill and his kit in general. The alphabet is your ceiling class, now ceiling is a class that will prioritize in stopping enemy targets from moving or using any skills. Now this class is actually very hard to use however can be really good um, once you've actually mastered it and again it's very similar to the cure class and the guard class. Once you have one in your team you will need it for end game content um, and if you're playing single like single player play um, having someone on your team that has ceiling effect is very good if you're not obviously able to play in a co-op um, mode. So let's go back here, um, we'll go back to him, we'll show you the last class real quick. So with the ceiling class, as you can see here, it is fully dedicated in ceiling and speed. So this is the fastest class out of all of them. It has to be because it has to be able to pull off stuns and freezes. Um, first skill is literally as simple as it sounds, it's another AOE skill. You don't really want to be using the skill too much, you really want to focus on sealing down key targets on the enemy team for your team to then stay alive or you know not be able to get the enemy team heal up or something like that you need to kind of use these uh, ceiling skills which we'll get to now so you can use this skill here it has a chance to seal the enemy where they as I said they can't do anything um, for three turns in PvP this is actually really really good um, when you're doing like 5v5 um, but overall not too much to say about the skill just use it on prioritized car uh, targets the last skill here, which is the Fury skill, will deal massive damage to one enemy and um, apply chaos for three turns. The target afflicted with chaos attacks its own men uncontrollably. So you'll use this on someone and they will attack their own targets. That's about it really for three turns. Now this is also game changing because it means they won't be able to attack you. And not only that, but even though they are still attacking, you're not dying and the enemy team are also getting killed by an extra person. So very good um, Fury skill overall. Um, all the other classes have some of the, uh, all the other people have the same classes as I just spoke about. Um, but as I was saying at the start of the video, in terms of what you're going to play, if you're someone that is free to play, I'd strongly recommend to play someone that isn't a support class because you're going to struggle in a lot of the content if you can't find someone to carry you through it. Um, for example, there'll be like um, Jalol's Tower where you probably won't be able to complete it on your own if you're free to play because you're using a healer and your you know your other characters might not do that much damage. If you are a v VIP player and you know you're spending money in the game, obviously a DPS class is very good because you're going to be carrying the team, you're going to be slaying. Um, but if you're going to play a support or tank, that's also very good because you'll be able to do the end game content because you'll be overpowered and over leveled. Um, However, playing support and you know um, tank is very difficult regardless of if you're paying or not. It just makes it easier if you're VIP. But if you're free to play then obviously it is a little bit more difficult. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'm sorry about all the connection problems. I think it's because I'm in this screen here for so long without moving. Um, and as I said, picking whichever one of these characters doesn't actually matter. It's the class in, in which that actually changes things. So if you pick, for example, Alphabet with this guy here. Or alphabet with where is she? Oh god, 
With this chick here, there's actually not really much of a difference, it's literally just aesthetically. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, take care, and peace out.